Okay, in video four of our series of five videos looking at the labour market, let's spend a couple of minutes thinking about uh, outward migration. This is when there's a net outflow of uh, a working population or labour force from a country. Using labour demand and supply diagrams, analyse the impact of net outward migration. And this is happening, of course, in many countries. It's quite hard to pick up the, the substantial inflows and outflows of population, particularly at times of great geopolitical uncertainty. Uh, interestingly, in terms of the UK, that, uh, that substantial increase in the number of Polish people, uh, of Polish nationality resident in the UK. Poland, of course, joined the EU in 2004. And in the succeeding years, there was a sizable, pretty much a trend increase year on year in the number of Polish nationals living and working in the UK. It pictured just over a million, actually, in 2017. That was just a year, obviously, after the Brexit referendum and has fallen back quite sharply, including in the last two years, of course, 2020 and 2021 uh, were years of the pandemic and lockdown and shutdown. And many uh, thousands of Polish people went back to Poland, their country of origin, uh, during the pandemic. So uh, there's been quite a sizable net outflow of, of Polish people from the UK uh, in recent times. Um, obviously, the UK is now outside the European Union, so we no longer have free movement within the single market. In a sense, there's been a fall in net EU migration into the UK, obviously, uh, but that's partly been off offset by an increase in non-EU migration into the UK. But let's consider, for example, the effect of a country uh, essentially losing workers through net outward migration. And the obvious way to use this diagram is to think about the labour demand and labour supply curves. Well, if there's a net outward migration, then the labour supply curve would shift to the left. I've made it also a little bit more inelastic, not only, only marginally. But if there's a net outflow, labour supply to a particular occupation would shift inwards from LS1 to LS2. And other things remaining the same, which of course they aren't, but Keteris power bus, that would lead to uh, rising wages and a fall in employment. Now, this would be a good diagram to use if you get a question on labour shortages. And it's certainly the case in the UK that there are many industries, many sectors, many occupations where, where there are persistent shortages of labour, both domestic and uh, from external, which is in many ways holding back production, uh, increasing wage costs and acting as a kind of barrier constraint to the post-pandemic recovery. The Migration Advisory Committee, MAC, recommends formalised route to allow low-skilled uh, people into the UK instead of ad hoc schemes. So they were arguing that there was a, such a chronic shortage of, of workers in the health and care sector in particular that it's causing major issues. And um, here's another article from the FT about uh, seasonal workers and the fact that many farm uh, in, uh, businesses, agribusinesses, have found it difficult to get the workers they need uh, to uh, to process pit crops and process them during the growing and the harvesting seasons. Of course, there's all sorts of issues to do with this in terms of what levels of pay and conditions are on offer, conditions of service and employment, the seasonality of the work and what have you. There are big wider issues, but I think the key thing is to think about how you can lose labour, demand and supply to, to show the example. In the fifth and final of our little videos, we'll look at, oh, actually I might look at two more. We'll look at trade unions and wages, and then we'll also do another video on uh, zero hour contracts.